Hello and welcome back to Academic. I'm Chris Wood and this is episode 2 of Let's Elm. In this series we're making an Elm application. If you'd like to more, know more about the project, have a look at the episode 0 video. So let's recap on where we were at the end of the last episode. So we have got the basic structure of our Elm application all set up and running and working. Now if you remember we're trying to recreate this character sheet from the game Exalted. And we had a very simple program where we had a model with a single attribute inside it, which is an integer, which represents one of these attribute fields here. Um, and we have um, a message, increment attribute, which alters the value for that int uh, integer. And then we've got our view function with a button to modify it. So let's just take a quick look at that again. Starting on reactor so that we can just test it. And let's just go here and jprison.com. So there we go. Uh, that's our, our web application at the moment. It has a button which increments the attribute and that's it. Not very interesting. But these are all just placeholders at the moment. We're going to actually put down the first sort of meaty part of the application today. Um, there's We're going to recreate this uh, player information section, I call it up here, which has lots of information about the character and the player who's using the character. So we don't need uh, a lot of these things that we had before. Uh, we can just remove the, the sort of placeholder stuff just now. Excellent, so let's run through what I did there. I modified the model to have this name field, which is a string. I changed the init so it now takes an empty string instead of an integer. We've got a new message here. Um, we've replaced the old one with edit name, and this is expecting to get a string sent into it, and we'll see why in a minute. Uh, our update function takes this message in, takes the string, and then assigns it to our model. Uh, now we've removed our button and our onClick event. We've now got an input box uh, with a placeholder name, and this comes from the HTML attributes library here. Um, and on input, instead of on click, so this is anytime somebody types something in, it will send the edit name message with the content of the input box. So let's take a quick look at that. If we say our J is our character's name, we can have a look at the messages that come in there. And you can see here we've got our name, Harmonious Jade, and you can see all the messages that the app has sent in the debug log. So you've got each of these, every time we add a new character to it, it changes and updates our model. Excellent. So there's, and we can just put in the player box, which is very simple as well, um, and we just do that in the same way. Excellent, so we've added the player field in, it's exactly the same thing again. We've added this player field to the model, an empty string on init, uh, we've got a new message for edit player, edit player comes in here, we put that into the model in the player field, and of course we've got an input box so that we can modify the field itself. And hopefully... Um, So if we look at the debug log again, we can see here we've got all of our edit name events, our edit name messages coming into our app, and our edit player messages as well here. And we've got our name and our player all correct in our model. Great. So the next thing that we want to add is this cast section here. Now this is a bit different because actually there's only five casts that they can possibly be. So we probably want to do this with a drop down menu instead. Excellent, so that's us added our drop down menu for our cast as well. And again, it's quite similar. So we've got our default value for it, which is doncast in this case. We've got this cast field, which is a string in our model, which we're, we're gonna save it. 
we've got the edit cast message with a string that comes in and then essentially that's just assigned to our model and then um, we've got our view here with our select box and the, diff the different options for it. So let's test that out, make sure everything's working. And I'm going to go to toilet cast. And so you can see here that there we go, twilight, blah, blah. And if we change the cast to dawn, let me change this to boy, then it pops up in the model. Great, so that's working nicely. The only thing is that you probably notice that there's a whole bunch of repetition here. This is relatively simple. Um, just this option over and over and over again. And let's, uh, why don't we try and remove a bit of this repetition by breaking out some of this stuff into a little function. Excellent, so we've reworked that bit to simplify it. So now we've got a function instead of the, the loose sort of select in there. And you can see it's called cast select. It's a select here. On input, it's edit cast, just the same as it was before. But the contents of it, instead of being this just a, the, a list that we created ourselves, we're using list.map. And map, if you're not familiar with it, uh, map's a really common tool in functional programming languages or, or programming languages with functional sort of elements in them. And what map does is it applies a function to a list of things. So we apply this simple option to all of our casts here. We've broken our casts down into a list. And this is really nice because this will probably be reusable. We'll probably want to just access the loose casts at some point. Um, and then we have this simple option here, which takes a value in as a string and essentially just makes it have the value and the text that's appropriate for that. Once we've selected something, it sends in a message just exactly the same as it did before. So let's just double check everything is working. So blah and blah again, and we're going to say that they're a nightcast. And you can see here that there we go. Oh, we've got nightcast, blah, blah. We can update this to the same. So this is a lot neater and more satisfying just for that by itself but it's also more reusable. Um, this simple option we can reuse again, for example, if we need to move the cast select, it's easy to move it around in our application at a later date. Maybe we'll want to break down some of these things to make um, a module for it separately um, that'll provide these reviews. Um, and that's all possible now that we've made these modifications. So we have the next three fields here, and then we're done. And uh, these are essentially just the same concepts, just a, a, a field that will just take any any string, anima is the same, and supernal ability is another drop down menu. So let's get cracking with that. Excellent, so we've just added those extra fields. Uh, we've updated our model accordingly. 
with defaults in them for our init, um, Don and Archery. Archery now is the default for the supernal ability. We've got different fields for each of these things here, and then different messages for each of these, and we just edit and update the particular ability based on the input. And you can see here we've got our player and our name, our concept anima, we've got our, both of our select menus as well. And our abilities here, we're doing the same thing, we're mapping this function to these abilities. One thing I didn't mention last time is, if you look at the type signature of these things, simple option is HTML message with a lower case M, whereas cast select is HTML message with an uppercase M. This basically means that cast select will return a HTML message of which has our message type in it, our custom message type here. Whereas this one, simple option, is a lowercase message because it's the generic, if we, the default message union type. And so, oops, um, essentially in this instance, um, we're using message because this doesn't return a message that's specific to our message type. It's just good practice, I think. Uh, let's run Elm format. Make sure that we're all up to scratch. There we go. Um, so yeah, and again, like I said, we were mapping this option across these abilities, and these abilities definitely will be useful, this list broken out by itself. Now, we've got a bit of repetition in our update function, but we can essentially, uh, you know, you can see that these are all very similar. Next time, in the next episode, we'll probably modify these so that they are, um, it's a single message that's modifying just the player information. Let's test this out. So we've got blah. And the player is blow, and they are a uh, night cast, they are a warrior princess, and their animal is cherry. And uh, their supernal ability is linguistic. So if we have a look, hopefully everything should have, yep, blah blah, a warrior princess, night cast, cherry blossom, linguistics. These are, this is great. And so if we modify this, we can have craft. We can make them Eclipse cast. We can make this cherry cola, and it's reflected in our model here. So great. Uh, that's us done for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be modifying the update function to tidy it up a bit so that it takes a single message in. And then we'll make a start on the next section of the application. So thanks for watching this episode. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them either down below or contact me on Twitter. I'm at Chris Wells Wood. Thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you found this useful. Hopefully see you next time.